My name is Tommy Bass. I'm at Montana State University. And uh, I'll wrap up here uh, a little more of a lighthearted um, finish here. It's sort of going to be just like window shopping with some ideas. Um, ideas for small farm uh, equipment to deal with compost and manure. All right. So somebody give me a thumbs up, maybe Carissa, if it looks good and you can hear me. Awesome. Thanks so much. So um, I've been monitoring the discussion board and then listening to my fellow presenters and um, we've had a real scale of, of operations represented, you know, under this sort of small farm moniker from hobby and recreational uh, equine operations or small livestock and equine businesses on up to uh, small scale, uh, relatively conventional livestock and uh, poultry production. I'm really going to focus more on some of these unique tools, mostly dealing with solid manure and mostly for uh, the small acreage uh, land application scenario, and then maybe a little bit of light duty compost equipment. Um, these examples are based on my own sort of observations and experience out in the field, and then just sort of reviewing different media <clears throat> recently as far as um, the cost of equipment that's out there and, and what is just out on the market for small scale farm equipment that'd be you know useful for for our context here context here and these examples i just think they're kind of interesting but i'm not implying any sort of uh endorsement or um, you know i haven't tried them out and um, nothing else going on there uh, with the companies so casey mentioned managing a six thousand per year turkey farm all their waste management by hand um, so lots of shoveling and wheelbarrows and wagons involved and this image here on a uh, at a stable you know you sort of think like all right what's next you have much more manure than this um, <laughs> on any regular basis and you're going to want some power equipment so some considerations uh, just like jeff led off with uh, considerations for building structures to manage manure and compost you want to think about the uh, the consumer or the client needs and objectives, um, what type of manure are they having to manage, how much, at what frequency, um, what are their options? Do they just need to stockpile and then they're going to export? Or are they getting engaged in some composting or land application? And all of those sorts of questions that you may engage with your, your clients about are going to lead you to try and come up with a decision on size of a piece of equipment, power source, power type, and the versatility, um, say for tractors, does it have a power takeoff? And this is essentially, for those that don't know, an extra drive shaft um, that provides power to a variety of implements. Um, and you know, so you're, you're turning or activating some additional implement behind the tractor. There are different attachment types and points or hitches. Um, you know, some very small farms, we might be able to handle stuff with ATVs or glorified lawn tractors, and that might just be a very simple sort of hitch. But if you want to have any real usable, um, even small scale, but pretty functional implements, you're probably looking at a hydraulic three point sort of hitch, uh, which sort of puts you into the base area, small, fully functional tractor size sort of um, product. So look for the accessories that are out there that match those client needs and the manure type, et cetera. Uh, you want to look for a piece of equipment, uh, recommend a piece of equipment that can do as many different tasks as possible. And then finally, um, but really it should be first, I guess, you need to consider operator safety and ease of operation. Um, as equipment gets bigger, it could be more complicated. Uh, it might be less safe to operate around a small farm environment. Um, so just an, another in the realm of questions to ask. All right, so mostly I just have fun pictures and examples. Um, there's a compact tractor by John Deere. Um, we see here that it's uh, set up with a bucket loader, front end loader. Um, it does have a PTO, so you can uh, hook up uh, sort of pretty active and functional attachments to the rear. Uh, but we're looking at about a $20,000 price tag, brand new. Uh, Kubota offers a whole uh, similar series. Um, this is used on a, a small diversified vegetable and livestock farm, uh, I think in Hamilton, Montana. We see here they're set up with some sort of uh, 
tillage implement and back uh, and then uh, front end loader uh, staying on the front. It's got the PTO. There are a variety of sizes in this series and once again brand new $18,000 to $22,000. Skid steers uh, are pretty darn useful on uh, small farms. Uh, you can move a lot of different types of material, uh, do everything from clearing snow at our northern latitudes uh, to dealing with some compost management and certainly cleaning um, cleaning out areas, moving manure around. Uh, they're relatively safe, pretty easy to operate. Um, there are additional uh, implements and stuff that you can add to these and make them more ag uh, sort of useful as opposed to just construction tools. Um, searching online, it looks like you can find 1990s era models um, across the country, different places for under $10,000. Um, if you're starting to look at used but newer uh, or on up to brand new, well, then it's a wide range, $15,000 up to $30,000 or more. Um, because of their ubiquity and construction and, and other types of work, you know, there's actually a pretty decent used market for these. Um, I've worked with small farmers that uh, have bought old beat up dump trucks. A lot of times they're, you know, they are not road worthy. They're not leaving the, the small farm, but it allows them to um, move materials around the farm, uh, around the small ranch. Um, some, as you see the, the newer um, dump bed that's, that's put into this uh, Chevy truck here, um, I've seen producers actually use these sort of dump beds to start uh, compost windrows just by sort of shaking it out uh, as they drive slowly and then uh, they'll come back with a small tractor or skid steer or something and build up their windrows. Another option more on the very small scale, um, ATVs, hybrids, the side-by-side -side sort of ATVs with utility beds. Um, you can also get uh, pushing and pulling implements for these. Um, you could pull those small scale manure spreaders like uh, Casey showed an example of a very small one with a PTO, but I've got some images here in a moment of ground drive, uh, small and very small spreaders. But really this market here for ATVs and hybrids is going to set you back uh, two to $8,000 um, in a used and new range, um, although there's a lot of nice ATVs and side-by-sides that are uh, well over $10,000. Utility and small scale dump trailers, these are quite helpful. Um, like I said, the, the opening sort of picture, shoveling all uh, that manure and, and stall uh, shavings and whatnot into a wheelbarrow, you know, that gets heavy and tippy in a hurry. So on a lot of small farms, particularly the recreational scale, these sorts of uh, little tow behind uh, handy trailers save a lot of uh, backbreaking work. All right, Casey introduced the concept of small spreaders. Uh, these are examples um, with power takeoff, and so they actually have a pretty uh, strong live bottom, so it helps pull material from the front of the trailer to the back of the trailer where you have these spinning flails and uh, distributes uh, the material out the back with some bit of uniformity. So um, behind a compact tractor, behind an older small tractor, uh, these are quite useful in that more upper end of the small farm spectrum. Uh, here's one of the very small ones, 40 plus cubic feet. Um, and the ones, you know, I looked at online, 5,000, some of them less uh, for manure spreaders in this category. The smallest type of manure spreader uh, is ground drive. All right, so it's, it doesn't have this drive shaft between the tractor and the trailer unit. Um, if the wheels are turning on the ground, that just activates the, the mechanisms, uh, pulls the chain across the, the, the belly of the body to help pull the compost or manure material toward the back, and then the, the flails uh, are turning via gear connection to the wheels. So a variety of sizes. These are much less expensive, uh, 2,600 to uh, 3,800 new in my internet searches. And uh, these can be pulled behind ATVs, those hybrid side-by-side -side ATVs, that sort of thing. Just sort of demonstrating some of these in action. And then this one on uh, your lower right, um, 
very compact unit, uh, very lightweight to move around, hook up to something, and um, yeah, keep it rolling and uh, distribute some manure. Chain harrows, whether they're purchased or um, or for farmer engineered and built, are are pretty helpful in this large uh, this larger scenario or concept of managing manure on small farms. Uh, if you have horses with a particular dunging behavior out in pasture, you can sort of help spread around and, and break up that material. Um, if you uh, you know have spread manure uh, or particularly horse stall sort of mixes where there's a lot of carbon that could impact um, nitrogen availability on your pasture, you want to spread that material around a bit. So um, really, this you know can help with with pasture management in the context of manure, stall waste, compost management. As far as larger scale compost turning, we saw some different examples. Uh, this is uh, getting on up into requiring a medium tractor to pull, but this is a unit that we bought for our experiment station that makes about a um, six by five pyramidal sort of uh, windrow. Um, bought it for $18,000, uh, starting with a lease to own sort of agreement. It does have its own power source, uh, ours, but some of these are also PTO driven. This would be, you know, um, more useful on the upper end of the types of farms we're talking about today. This is an example of a skid steer attachment. Uh, it's hydraulically driven. You see the lines there. So you would just uh, plug those into ports on the front of the skid steer. You would have disconnected the bucket. Um, this particular unit I uh, saw online uh, I don't know, about three or four years ago at the time, it was $3,400. Here's an image, um, a, a little bit newer one, but that's how it would hook up to a skid steer. And this example here of a new New Holland skid steer with the uh, tracks instead of wheels. But you can just do a lot with that skid steer, as I mentioned earlier. I've worked with many small farms that either use a small front end loader or a skid steer for all their manure management from scraping and cleaning, to making stockpiles, to building and managing compost windrows. Um, these windrows here, um, two in the foreground that are hard to see, and then one in the background, but these were built by um, first discharging out of a small manure spreader and, and lines, and then taking the skid steer to push them up into more of a, a long pyramidal type of windrow. The same producer welded up this expanded metal grate, uh, is a compost screen, so it's just angle iron, some bucking uh, boards down at the bottom, and then this expanded metal uh, grating. And uh, gets a good, nice product out of it, takes his rougher stuff and moves it back into his composting program. Finally, a couple more higher tech options. Uh, these small manure vacuums appear to have hit uh, the US market in the last few years. They can pick up solid manure up to kind of a more slurry-ish type of product. Some different sizes here from this brand. Uh, I just thought it was interesting. I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, they seem marketed more towards the, uh, the horse crowd. What about liquid and slurry? Um, I have a couple clients and, and farms I've worked with here in Montana, some small niche market uh, hog operations and a couple dairies. And um, these are small niche market specialty production types of, of farms, but they actually do have some liquid and slurry manure management going on. So not just always dry manure in these situations. And so um, irrigating out of those liquid storage tanks that Jeff showed us with like a, a, a large bore, big gun, movable irrigation system, you know, and a, and a long hose is an option. And then um, I saw in the UK and Europe, these very small tankers. I did not find any uh, looking for commercial sources in the US, it's not to say they don't exist, but uh, could be an option for these liquid and slurry situations. Alternatives to lease and purchase, uh, men, <laughs> many of these pieces of equipment that I showed you are still quite expensive. Um, small farm budgets are, uh, are different. They're often, uh, in, in a worse situation due to economies of scale than, than larger operations. So cost is a, a serious consideration. So, you know, if we're talking to uh, producers about these things, we'd want to see what their options were for lease, borrowing or renting from a conservation district that has equipment, uh, for example, 
shared ownership, co-op sort of ownership situation, or possibly they might not even need to own. They, there might be a custom cleaner hauler uh, business in the area that just turns out to be more suitable for a small farm situation. Uh, and a little bit just for fun, the Subaru manure hauler. Uh, looks like about a half cubic yard of compost in this pre-2008 Outback. See a lot of uh, manure and compost uh, leaving horse farms in, in our area uh, and just sport utility vehicles and such. And then uh, if you have a very small farm, I found some examples online of very small farm manure equipment. Um, I actually didn't know there was such detailed uh, fun models for uh, for a kind of unique area of, of ag that uh, I've spent most of my career in. So with that, um, I'll wrap it up and turn it over to our hosts 